Well, if you took ECE 3300 with me, we learned that we can supply a lot of power to an antenna. But if the radiation efficiency of the antenna, psi, is not very high, then only a small fraction of the power delivered to the antenna will actually be radiated. So P radiated here is psi, the efficiency of the antenna, times the total power supplied to the antenna. And psi is equal to P radiated over P radiated, the power radiated, plus the power that is lost. For example, if we consider a short dipole where L, the length of the dipole relative to a wavelength, is 0.01, the radiation efficiency is on the order of 0.87. This means that 13% of the power delivered to the short dipole will be lost through ohmic heating. And there be, may be other losses as well, but ohmic heating is a major source of loss. Such a short dipole is not particularly efficient. On the other hand, the radiation efficiency of a half wave dipole is on the order of 99%, 0.99. This is much higher than the radiation efficiency of the short dipole. This is supposed to be psi. And it's, this is why half-wave dipoles and quarter-wave monopoles are so popular. So if we consider that the wavelength, lambda, at 5 hertz is 3 E8 meters per second, divided by 5 hertz, we get 60 megameters. So a quarter-wave monopole antenna would have to be 15 megameters long. And that certainly is unrealistic. So to help us settle on an operating frequency for a geolocation system, let's try to figure out what might be the tallest vertical monopole antenna that we could realistically build. Well, as of today, the tallest radio mast ever constructed was the Warsaw radio mast near the town of Gabin in central Poland. It was about 650 meters high and it was built in 1974 and was used to transmit electromagnetic waves at about 225 kilohertz. However, this antenna eventually collapsed in 1991. Now probably today we could engineer a stronger antenna that can be this high that hopefully would not collapse. I'm not sure if we want to go to the trouble of building a 650 meter high antenna. That's quite high. But from this example, we at least know that a 650 meter high antenna is possible. So let's go ahead and consider a 650 meter high antenna, partly because if we consider a shorter antenna, we would need to use a higher grid resolution to directly model it. So now that we've decided on a height for our antenna, we just need to determine an operating frequency. For this, we need to balance the fact that lower frequencies propagate with lower attenuation whereas higher frequencies radiate more efficiently from the antenna. Something else we can consider is whether antennas for other applications already exist for transmitting electromagnetic waves at frequencies above 5 hertz, but also uh, below 100 kilohertz. We can consider how far these antennas can radiate and whether we could still get global coverage for our geolocation system with only a few, or at least a reasonable number of transmitters. If we looked into this, we could find, for example, that the United States Navy constructed what is called the Tradeco antenna at the Naval Radio Station, Cutler, in Cutler, Maine. This image shows that there are actually two antennas at this station. This is just for redundancy. When in use, one of the transmitters radiates one megawatt, <laughs> having trouble writing, one megawatt in the very low frequency or VLF range of the electromagnetic spectrum. This range extends from 3 to 30 kilohertz. This is what each of the transmitters looks like from the side. The center mast 
is the radiating element. So that is right here. It's a monopole antenna. It's about 300 meters high. And the star-shaped horizontal wire array, all these wires extending out horizontally from the top of the antenna, is a capacitive top load for the antenna. We'll be talking more about using circuit elements with antennas in the next design challenge for this class. But so e each of these vertical things here is not a transmitter. Really, only the middle one is actually transmitting. And here is an image of the antenna from the sky. This antenna was constructed so that the United States could maintain, maintain communications with submarines while they are still submerged in the ocean. VLF waves can propagate with only 2 dB per megameter attenuation in the Earth Ionosphere Waveguide, and they can propagate to depths of 30 to 100 feet in the ocean, allowing submarines to stay submerged. Even though the ocean is a good conductor at VLF frequencies, the skin depth is quite large. Okay, well, we might be converging on something. We know that antennas up to at least 650 meters can be constructed, and we know that electromagnetic waves in the VLF range of the electromagnetic spectrum can propagate around the world with an attenuation of just 2 dB per megameter meaning we should be able to get reliable global coverage with only a small number of antennas. So let's see if we can model a 650 meter high antenna and let's pick a nice, uh, a nice operating frequency of 10 kilohertz for our transmitting frequency. At 650 meters, the electrical length of a dipole antenna, equivalent to the monopole over a ground plane that we'll be using, is L over lambda, would be 2 times 650 meters over 10,000, that's our operating frequency. So we get an antenna with the equivalent length of 0.13 uh, of a wavelength. So we can expect our transmitter to be much more efficient than a short dipole, but not as efficient as a half-wave dipole. We're giving up some efficiency in order to transmit at frequencies that can propagate over large distances and using a vertical antenna that can be realistically constructed. All right, so in summary, I recommend you now complete three tasks. First, change the sinusoidal source waveform in your grid to a center frequency of 10 kilohertz. And second, change the grid resolution delta equal to 650 meters. And third, think about the following question. How can we adapt our two-dimensional model that we currently have so that we can simulate a, a 650 meter monopole over a ground plane? So this is 650 meters, and here's the ground. Can we do this with our 2D model, or do we need to go to fully a, a fully 3D model?